Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice 9.11. Well, let's continue this. We're pushing mostly east, sending a little bit of stuff back west. Uh oh, we had a major defeat there. Oh, down here. Okay. Uh, I didn't pay attention once I started this off. Okay, so they just exhausted themselves. They'll be able to defend any counterattack. These guys can come into there. Anyway. Ping pong you back and forth as we push in from there, man. Yeah. Yes, we control the Mediterranean still. Still not sure why that has a every time you start it checks or needs to be reconfirmed or something I don't know because none of the others that are similar seem to do that. And events are going to be coming soon, it looks like. Light cruiser training has advanced, very nice. And let's end that. We shifted a lot of leadership over to officers, which will just at 103%. Italy, giving them money for fuel. Well, No, I want to, but no. Okay. Rutiger. two of them. This is the sort of pulse one that was a bit weaker. Okay, well, 
Let's detach it from the Night HQ. You get to go recoup in France. That's what happened a lot with these units. They well, they're shattered or just simply time to, you know, upgrade. Winter is coming. Yes, we know that winter is coming. Landing craft. Landing craft flotilla flotillas. Yes, yes, learn to speak better, gamer. Okay, an order plays. Do we accept or not? Who? Hungry? Um, yeah, okay. Rebuild the 23rd Undo Seaboat Flotilla. Um, okay. Message from General Lieutenant von Schnickerndorf. Uh, mein fear of the whole Soviet. A whole Soviet infantry regiment wishes to defect and join the Vermont. Yes. We'll take this. Autarchy, go ahead. No, thank you. Oh, the Laconia incident. Yeah, this was a really stupid thing that happened during World War II. Um, Germans torpedo a... Um, uh, passenger liner um, and then um, try to rescue them and then the Americans spot them and the bomber is um, asked or calls in to see if they can um, to see if they should attack them or not because you had three submarines on the surface towing a bunch of rafts and other things and um, and, um, let's see, they crashed out of the glory being destroyed the pilots. So they reported that they had sunk and were awarded medals for their bravery. Yeah, um, obviously they end up killing a lot of, um, the passengers. They don't kill any of the German submarines. Now, of course, the submarines, if they let them go, would have been able to continue to, um, which they were able to continue, um, attacks at sea, which could mean more deaths and destruction. So I understand that. But what this also did was it moved um, the U-boat um, war into a more total war aspect, where they were trying to somewhat, I um, don't know why this... So much change relations with Italy, but um, trying to keep it somewhat of the older rules of you know going after ships, letting them know. Okay, so we've crossed the Volga. Relocate training units to occupied territory. There's that there was divided between there's that replacements and else be done training units. Most far-reaching change in the organization. Replacement army took in October 42 when all basic um, uh, replacement training units were broken up into their in two elements. One to handle induction and, and replacement and the other to handle actual combat training. Creation of these divisions were primarily done to free combat divisions for use on the Eastern Front by replacing those stationed in occupied territories. The mission of these new divisions was to train recruits having already basic, received basic training in the homeland with in the specialties of their combat theater, they were also served to occupy and secure rear areas <clears throat> where they could be considered to be able for frontline duties. Um, there were originally five such divisions um, subordinated to Harris Group A, B, and then will deploy them. No need. Um, okay, we'll deploy them. 
form the reserve core. Yeah, we'll do that. The fall of Stalingrad, yes. So they gain five in descent, lose four national unity. Now let's go look and see. Probably gonna be a, a hit to us in some effect for these, I'm guessing, but I don't know. Okay, so we have one down here in Crimea. One there's so northern Ukraine. Baltic, okay. Another one here. Another one here. Okay, so these aren't very good divisions, which we aren't expecting. Very good divisions, quite honestly, it was not. Okay, you're here now. You're going you now. You got. You can just keep going there. Here. You're going that way. And you can stop going that way. Once we saw where they're going, let's do also go in that direction. Across the river, move east. Oh, putting the wrong key again. You take that. Um, oh, we got Astrakhan. Cool. Take that side of the river. You can push into there. them via the air. You oh, you don't need to bother about you stop attacking. You do too. Oh, you do not. Oh. Okay, um. Okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna fight your way across the river and them. Okay, that makes so much sense. Especially seeing as how we have the vent pop up. Going forward. Um, I'm gonna fight your way into there.
Okay, yes, we sold the aircraft. Money is lost. It's all in Guy Factory destroyed. Okay. Lots of stuff here. Okay. So they had six and a heavy. So. Um, don't know. Oh, yeah, this sort of fired before the Schutzmann shaft. This is. Um, Schutzmann shaft was a collaboration with auxiliary police force, German occupied territories during World War II. Um, organization established by Reichsführer SS Heinrich Kimmler on July 25th, 1941. Members of the Schutzmann shaft were subordinated to the German Ordnungspolizei. Probably butchering that too. At its peak, the battalion um, of auxiliary police numbered, um, what's that, 300,000 people. Although they lacked discipline, training, and modern weapons, the Schutzmannschaft battalions were heavily used by the Germans, outnumbering German police even 10 to 1. As a measure of rearguard defense, auxiliary police was used in multiple roles, stationary police, patrolmen in cities, okay, and partisans, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Note, if you form these units, do not change their names or disband them because it will break an event chain. Okay. So yes, we want that. Um, Orel taken. Again, these are some of my events that I created based on photo albums. And, and so we can... It's only a, a 0.2%, not even a full percent losing descent. But... Part of it is to, you can see that part of it is just immersion. We gain a little national unity there. Gain a percentage of a percent. And to, you know, show to show that you're pushing in against the Soviets. So we're also going to tour this city. A little bigger city, a little further east. Some of these have been delayed a bit. Um, you can see the cathedral there. Give the Laconia order. Laconia order was issued by German Grand Admiral Kon um, Donitz. See, this is what I was talking about. As a result of the Laconia incident, all Kriegsmarine um, sub um, submarine commanders were ordered to disregard any survivors sunk um, of Allied vessels prior to the incident. The vessels of the Kriegsmarine um, customarily picked up survivors of a sunken vessel in September 42 off the coast of West Africa in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, the German vessels, among them um, German submarines, were attempting to rescue, yes, the Laconia. Okay, um, women and children beforehand rescue operations continued by other vessels. Other U-boats were also attacked by aircraft and received a total of, were eventually um, destructed whilst um, 1,600 mostly Italian prisoners. Oh, that's why, because there were Italian prisoners on the ship. Um, that's why it disrupted relations. Okay, we don't have... Again, I think this is um, revolver held. Um, I really think um, these events should have a, a no need um, or choose not to. Okay, so we already have unrestricted warfare, so we're not going to get any benefit from this. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to get any um, negatives because I don't know that you have a, um, you know, that that this triggers any other sorts of behavior by anybody else. Um, how my feelings on, well, okay, one, I would, I've watched a, I think just about every World War II movie made in the U.S. during World War II, just about. Um, oh, there's some small little B movie things. I don't know if you know. B movies were sort of movies that were shot within a, were, were like written shot, and um, you know, done all within a week's time period. They were sort of um, in the olden days. You, you, know, you went to see a movie or the movies. They generally had two playing at once, and um, or well, you know, two. You normally went into a big theater, and they'd have a first movie and a second movie. The first movie was, um, you know, partisan outbreak here was often just. Um, maybe a second run of a um, of another movie or just these small movies but they made a lot of small content cheap stuff very sort of limited budget recently saw one that was dealing with um you know sort of one of these tropes of 
oh, you know, disgraced officer who was forced to leave the United States Navy. And now that war's broken out, he is um, rejoined in under a, you know, John Smith type name as just a, you know, standard enlisted guy. And he's now does special things and whatnot um, kind of movie. Um, and it was about mind clearing and it's on side on YouTube. And the biggest problem with watching it on YouTube is the quality doesn't come up. You have the video doesn't come up nearly to what my channel does. Um, so it was sort of grainy and not so great that way, but still, um, so there, there's things like that, but just about every significant movie I think I've seen. And there's a bunch that have, um, German, uh, U-boats machine gunning uh, survivors from uh, uh, transports, you know, tankers, cargo, whatever, in the water in their U or in their lifeboats and being rammed and whatnot. And that was obviously made propaganda during the war. I would be fairly interested if some of you could point to a real documented case in which um, German U-boats surfaced and machine gunned people swimming in the water or machine gun pure lifeboats. Now they would often maybe uh, machine gun or attack people on board um, the enemy ship because they're trying to take out the radio because um, early on they'd often, because they didn't want to waste a torpedo. They found a, a lone transport aircraft or um, ship out there. Um, and they don't want to waste the um, um, torpedo on on it. There's no no escorts. They surface and use their their guns to sink it. Now, this may seem odd to you, um, but I think a lot of ships at the time, um, you know, out at sea, didn't have any batteries aboard them. So all their electro electronics were um, actively generated. From the um, the engines as they worked, and when they get into port, they would often um, either run a small generator, or run um, or if they were docked, hooked up to a um, uh, shore shore connection. So if you immediately blew out the engines and stopped it from working, they couldn't be, send the the you know we're under attack signal. Um, so they'd often try to knock out the radio um, sending unit, particularly, um, so that they would so they would surface and engage that way. But I just don't know if they if there was really any um, U-boats actively surfacing and actively um, attacking, you know, just standard merchant marine that are in the water. I would be interested to know if you have a point like to a Wikipedia article or something like that. Where that's a fairly well documented case of them doing it. Um, should they pick up survivors? Well, if you know anything about U-boats, I would say no, because they are so cramped as it is. You know, passengers, or, or you know, crew members, that you just don't have room for much. You know, alone survivors, sure. You know, um, if you're or two or three guys, if you find two or three guys on a raft somewhere out in the middle of the ocean, um, I think I would pick them up. Uh, unless I thought they were um, suicidal, like we know some of the Japanese were suicidal. Um, if they had a knife or somebody, they would try to stab it. Or if they got aboard your submarine, they might try to do something to to, to um, take out the submarine. But because of the, that's sort of the Japanese thing. Um, pretty warriors, not so much the, or not at all the, you know, merchant crews or something like that. I'm talking about the, you know, down pilot or whatever. Um, but, you know, so if it's somebody way out in the middle of nowhere and you could easily house them and there was no risk of being spotted, yeah, I would do that. But just because you sunk a ship, um, but then again, I wouldn't also try to, you know, harm them, you know, by machine gunning them or doing anything to make their life harsher than it was. Okay, yeah, we'll take this. This is what's eating into our officers. Fuhrer Directive number 46. 
At his Venice, Venistia headquarters, Hitler issued Führer Directive Number 46 on the 18th of August 1942 under the title Instructions for Intensified Action Against Banditry. Okay. Banden Ber Kampfvogel. In the East, making um, the radicalization of the so called anti partisan war. The directive designated the SS as the organization responsible for rear area warfare in areas under civilian administration, um, in areas under military jurisdiction, um, army group rear areas, the army high command had overall responsibility. The directive declared that the entire population of partisan controlled territories with enemy combatants and practices meant the aims of the security warfare was not pacification, but complete destruction of the partisan movement in their respective regions. Okay, we could reorganize our security structures or no need. Okay. No, we're going to go no need. Um, I guess as anti-partisan HQ, Western Russia, yeah, but nah. Don't need the extra revolt risk and local partisan and well right now we can't really afford that but no thank you no need okay former form the Estonian if you've got former form the Estonian SS Legion now um we just saw the event of the um uh Schutzmannschaft um guys that those 300,000 personnel um joined up for that at one or there was that at one time it, it was so it's a huge organization as um the um soviets pushed west a lot of those people were pushed into um these various ethnic legions as combat troops because as they lost the their territory because they were fleeing west as the territories that they were theoretically supposed to guard um were no longer there um, they were basically drafted, if you will, into being into frontline combat units. Formation was announced. Okay, uh, established. Yeah. Estonia Games. Okay. Okay, yep. We want that. Communist resistance in Bulgaria is rising the German invasion of the Soviet Union. Caused a significant wave of protests which led to activation of mass guerrilla movement headed by the underground. Bulgarian Communist Party resistance movement called the Fatherland Front, which is also the name of the fascist party in um, Austria, was set up on August 42 by the Communist Party. Vinvo movement and a number of other parties to oppose the then pro-Nazi government after a number of allied victories indicated the Axis might lead to the war. Okay, well. Bulgaria just Okay, revolver held. Um, I get your zeal. And these guys here look like, yeah, they're, um, I do get your zeal on all this, but that's a little too much. It just is. We'll send some of our Bulgarian units back to Bulgaria here. Um, yeah, that's just a little too much. Small force rear area. And yes, we do overdo it. I, I totally, because what we're, I totally get the idea that we're overdoing some of these um, revolts from what they were historically, especially the size, but that's, Primarily because this is the scale of Hearts of Iron and um, trying to force the necessity of um, of using ground units as opposed to just letting simmer. Um, okay, we're going to. We've gone down so much from this because you can look here and see all of those because we hit last episode Baltic Railway build which is another 5% Moscow 10% Ukraine 15 Belarus 10 Crimean just 2% but all those things are all eating into our um, ICs 
Oh, these guys should go right to the top. Oh, that was the rebuild, All right? Go to the top. Let me get them out quick. Yeah. And I want supplies. I don't want a lack of supplies to be a real thing. No, 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 you just you keep. No, oh, I'll cut two of these guys so I can come down. Oh, you're moving fast. We'll do a second cutoff wave. stuff. Well, I think we have the resistance class, so it's Okay, um, I think you've overdone it again here with all the health. Again, I am not against the idea of some of these things, but, and I'm for the idea of, yes, uh, the swine, even more regimental, French resistant name, okay, yeah, and even more. Now, really? Really? This was a fairly Germanized area. At least that's my understanding of it. Um, okay, this is military administration of uh, France. Yes, we'll get a good manpower. Lose 50. That. Okay. Mushkovo taken. Yes, a victory. They lose against tiny percent. Um, uh, cool down. But it is big enough. Excellent. Yes, okay. Well, um, you're battling somebody, you're not. Who are you? Then take them out. You're gonna fight there. Well, you attack there now. Attack there. I can't go anywhere, but I do totally get the idea that you're wanting to. 
force show the need for um, occupation troops I totally agree and and get and get the point I'm just going in a bit much and I guess because I see all these points here a third of them would be good I mean I really I we give them money for oil and decline I want to dig my way out of this hole of lack of oil. Um, Nick suggested probably using this province mostly to let them attack out and then counter attack here. Uh, it's a good idea, but what we're seeing here, and I think, is them just exhausting their ICs and then, um, or their organization levels of their ICs, and then they're going to. Okay, Gerd von Schrippenberg is going to retreat. We don't want his headquarters to shatter. I think the rest of these guys are going to okay. this time out here. Oh, well, if I just realized it was. Also, and I know Revolver held you, you make your um, mod to focus as a player playing Germany, um, but really some of these things should have a um, um, this ruling of the SS, okay. Okay. So, yeah, this is SS, okay, so you're. Um, Go into the interior, I guess. Well, well, they'll still be revolting once you get down there, but let's look at revolt risk. Okay, yeah, see, we're mostly green. They have a minimum required um, revolt risk. They never made it east. Those guys, not them, but. Um, and not so much these police. Let's send the police in a little bit further. Um, the, I was going to move these guys, the, the light infantry. These, but just never. The combination of lack of fuel, you know, because it's slowing up by ships, and most and just shipping lack thereof of that too. But and they haven't. The battle hasn't taken long enough to need it. Okay, well you've taken that. Let's see, is there anything else out here that we're taking? We're gonna take that. Taking like we just saw that they had a any aircraft gun out here. Oh they have a tank tracker you took. And then into their Ural area. Ural's area. Tank factories, okay, well, you can help from here now that... Uh-oh, major defeat. Where are these? Yep. Maybe. Guess so. So it was a major defeat out here. Okay, they got exhausted. Well, the left side division went down. Well, not really, but they exhausted themselves.
Yeah, they've broken out, sort of. Well, those guys have to be. Your victory. there and create another sort of blocking I said they were going to take them, but are they? Yeah. Looks like it. Okay. Another reserve core, fine. Um, Wehrmacht shelf. Oh, Wehrmacht. You got a Wehrmacht health harren. Got a mm, compound words. Okay. Um, tap into this way. I have a similar event, not necessarily um, the same thing, but yes, we could do this. We'd like the 50 manpower for sure. There we go. Down in Madagascar, in places. Okay, we're gonna get there on the 13th. So, long time to go. So, please go see that way. How is, there, oh, how is the Pacific doing? Yeah, look there in a little while. Okay, there. Doing fair over here. Well, they're. I haven't lost by any means, but they're sort of sucking in the Philippines. They haven't taken that yet. Still haven't taken Singapore. At least that's going okay, and that 
Since they've got supplies coming in, presumably that's doing okay, and that's doing okay. So, yeah. Oh, that's another thing. Um, okay, we are well organized up. Let's come right to here. Convoy reading, pass it. Because there's somewhere around here, presumably, presumably some lend lease going on. Presumably, we don't know for sure. But um, that could be happening. They still haven't come and taken those two provinces for some reason. Defeat these guys? Okay. No, I'm a little surprised. They I know they took on a big unit, but okay, we're sending you up this way. Or another um, so. fly. Well, they seeming to be winning most of their fights. Okay. Estonian Grinschutz Ezatz Regiment. Um, we formed them. All right. Uh, yes, we'll take another convoy raider. Let's put a commander in charge of it early on here. So as they get organized. These guys here, okay. Now let's take a look at our revolt risk in the east. Well, not quite Estonia, but it is the Baltics.
they make my unit retreat? Not good. Uh, well, now that they can. Okay, sure. We'll do that. You're gonna get up there, you're gonna come there, and then we're gonna try a coordinated attack. Hopefully you'll be better by then. Or at least able to effectively attack. Or contribute to the attack. Specialized armor, you come in there. Guys, what are they that we're fighting here? Guards, okay. This general here, Zach, should be grinding up a lot. Dash. Yes, we'll find that. That's good.
Yeah, well, we're going to end the episode here. I want to thank you so much for watching. I want to thank you for liking the videos, if you would. And, of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you really want to tell, not only liking the videos helps tell YouTube that, hey, I like this content, give me more, you can ring that bell. Um, and so, because I'd like to see you around more often. And, of course, so that I know you're here, really, um, post a comment. Tell me how cool I am or how much I suck or I don't know. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.